Welcome everyone to Real Talk with my homies. I'm your host, Jake Wardrop, licensed realtor with Homepage Realty in Louisville, Kentucky. Today, I am very excited to be joined by the head of the table, the tip of the spear, El Capitan, the head honcho, the original homie, the big kahuna, the puppeteer, the skipper, the property whisperer, the keeper of the keys, the big toe, the pace car, George Barrett. Hey, George, how are we today? Ah, uh, that was glorious. I like that. You... Took a lot of time and effort. Yeah. Yeah, don't show Carrie that. I mean, I wish I were all those things, but really, I just have to ask Carrie for everything, so. But no, I appreciate that. Was that a chat GBT or was that? No, that was uh, that was from the heart. The big Believe toe. Not. Yeah, I like that. The big toe is, uh, is one that I'm a big fan of. I like that. I like that. Well, I don't know if I can live up to that introduction, but I'm really happy to be here. Uh, for those who aren't at our sales meetings all the time, I've been pestering you for ever since I saw the first episode. I was wildly yes. jealous. A lot of FOMO. Wildly jealous. So I'm, I'm glad you finally allowed me to come on the show. Yes. Well, we had to work out the kinks. Yeah. That's what you said. But yeah. really it was, you were trying to push me off after you got a couple of favorite agents in. Yes. Yes. I'm... And I've seen every episode, by the way. Thank you. Seen every episode and all, all the shorts that you put out, which is a nice strategy. Yeah. Like thank that. you. I appreciate that. I like that. It's, congratulations. It's fun. It's it's a good show, um, and I'm glad you're doing it. So thank you, yeah, thank you. Uh, giving me compliments while you're on the show. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to get that second appearance. I mean, we want to become a recurring guest. Yeah, on the show. exactly. <laughs> if you need a co-host, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> and by the way, I don't know if camera's picking this up. This guy is now sponsored. Yeah, I mean that's pretty cool. Little product placement, Tucker Farms. Shout out Michael Speck. And Yeti sponsoring you too. I mean, you got national brands and everything. You're big time, Jake. Cannot confirm nor deny the Yeti affiliation. (laughs) So for all those who want to sponsor, it's Jake at Homepage Realty. Yes, we will gladly. I will. I will go out to the highest bidder. Yeah, (laughs) whatever. Even if it's two (laughs) dollars. Yeah, whatever you want, as long as it's okay. You got to run it by George first. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's let's kind of break the ice a little bit, George. Let's do um, I got a lot of grief for not doing this with Scott, so we're going to do it with you. I did it with Ryan. It was fun. The Scott was your commercial real estate friend? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Scott was the um, insurance agent. Oh, okay. State Farm. Okay. Yeah, episode four. Um, so what is your favorite TV theme song of all time? Oh, gosh, I got a lot. Um, I think... It, I, my so my, one of my favorite shows of all time yep. is Billions. Okay, um, I really secretly wish I was Axe. Do you watch the show ever? I don't. I've heard great things, but that is on my. I only have so much time in the day. Yeah, exactly. Eventually, I will watch it. Well, so we'll we'll go with the theme song to that show. Okay, for me, it's a tie between two. Okay, The Sopranos. That's great tough. song. That's tough to beat. Great yeah. song, and Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Just because it reminds me of my youth. Yeah, I almost feel like that's cheating because that's like a legitimate song, you know? Like, everyone knows that song. Yeah. That could be, you could actually play that on there. You're not bumping The Sopranos, unless, I don't know. No, I mean, I was a ride through this town. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I think that's pretty, I think you, Will Smith's pretty hard to beat. I think that, that is true. It. That is true. DJ, DJ Jazzy Jeff. I think oh, yeah. Yep. 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 All right. If you could put a franchise restaurant in your house, what would it be? Oh man, I used to own a, a franchise restaurant, so I guess I'd, I'd which one? Uh, well, it wasn't that I bought the franchise. We started franchising our restaurant that that gotcha. we had started. It was uh, Chop Shop Salads. Okay, yeah. So, so is that the answer? Yeah, might as well. All right. I know how to how to open it, so that's pretty. Mine's easy. Chick Fil A. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a no brainer. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my least favorite breakfast that we have at sales meeting. Really. really? That's my favorite by a landslide. I gotta watch the carbs sometimes, you know? Yeah. Especially the deep fried stuff. But yeah. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. College days add a lot. Yeah. Of it, so, <laughs> uh, and second for me would be Chop Shop Salads. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 100% Chop Shots. Looking for that sponsor, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> what, uh, what is your top, what's your go to gas station snack? Go to gas station snack. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing. I'm like always worried about, I'm very health conscious. So, yes. Pickles, actually. Okay. Single big in pickle. Pickle in a bag. A lot of electrolytes in there. Yeah, pickle in a bag. Exactly. <laughs> pickle in a bag. Yes, that's right. Um, mine is not, mine's off the beaten path. Mine is the mini peanut butter and crackers. Oh, yeah. That's solid. It's a neat, it's a, it's like the one, the circular ones? No, like the, it's the red bag. It's got like literal, literally mini. For anyone watching, I'm, I'm holding a little circle. Yeah. Um, 
It is little mini peanut butter crackers. Now, do you do you open it? Like no, that? no, it's because I'm driving. Like, it's just they're easy to pop, throw them in the cup holder, yeah. smack them, good to go. Yeah. So, what's the ga- gas station drink then? Oh, yeah, uh, that's easy. Uh, if I go to Thornton's, they have a, uh, I'm going to sound like a seven year old when I say this, <laughs> but they <laughs> grab a red, white, and blue. Um, what's the red, white, and blue popsicle? The rocket pops or whatever. I have no idea. They've I know got, what you're talking about. They've got a slushy that's that flavor. Oh, my God. <laughs> Like this, a yeah, the seven year old answer. I get we it. are on two different diets, Jake. <laughs> yes, yes. You're you're still trying to impress somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. If there was a stat available for your life, okay, what would you want it to be? What I want it to be, not yes. what it actually is. Yes. What would you want to know statistically? What you've done or something about you? Oh, okay. You know. I would love to know um, just like how many pins and watches and stuff that I've lost over my life. That is a good one. I mean, I I am not. So this watch is the first expensive watch that, and it's not that expensive. It's a Garmin that I allowed myself to buy since college. Because I went through this thing where I was buying watches and three days later, I'd lose that watch. So I'd love to know like where a few of those are actually. I went through a G-Shock stage. Yeah. A lot of G-Shocks. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where any of them are. Now, do you lose stuff? Uh, not really. I lost my AirPods not too long ago. That was a tough pill to swallow. Have you tried to the Find Me? I did. Um, I did not know that it was a thing until it until was the long, battery died. Long gone. Yeah. Uh, my wife told me about it, and I was like, "Oh, well, I wish I would have known that about eight weeks ago." It's really cool. It gives you this like pointer when you get yeah. close. And yeah, I, I'm so for someone who loses stuff all the time. Yeah, I misplaced the uh, Apple TV remote a lot because it's so tiny. Yeah. So I actually bought a case for it that I can put an AirTag in it. And now I can ping it from my phone where it's stuck between the cushions. <laughs> um, for me, the stat is, so I played baseball in college. Mm-hmm. I played a little bit after college as well. Oh, but brag. Yeah, no, no big deal. Yeah. Uh, I would love to know how many pickoffs I had. Oh, you were a pickoff champion. I was left-handed and humble brag. Pretty good. If there was an NCAA record, I may have it. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. It was, it was very, I've. Yes. Anyone that played baseball with me, please comment below <laughs> that it was good so I don't look like an idiot. Yeah, or that I thought you meant like tell me the stat. Like they were no, you were so no. good they're counting. We, we the kept stadium. tabs on it for a couple years. Um, but if I had to guess, I'd say at least forty in Now is that not a stat in college? It is, but we, we were in a transition from NAIA to division three my yeah. last two years. So the stats I don't it's it's kind of a stat that you have to catch in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got like couple guys from the bullpen that are keeping stats like right. they're probably going to make a few mistakes here and there because right turn on sunflower seeds playing on their phones yeah how they're also keeping stats so it's not the most accurate but yeah our junior senior year those stats are pretty accurate because we had somebody designated to it but freshman sophomore year was kind of now what's like more like the flies? secret of of getting like really acting like you're squared it on the catcher's call or um, did you have a secret or for me really- for me it was easy um i would i looked at the stereotypes of what base runners are taught mm-hmm. to know when the pitcher's coming over. Mm-hmm. And I would just do the opposite. So like every single time. Give me one of those stereotypes, you know? So one of them would be, if you're looking at first base, yeah. you're generally throwing home. As, okay. le- as I was a left-handed pitcher, so it was a lot easier. I'm facing the action. Yeah. yeah. If I'm left-handed, I'm looking at first base, I'm throwing home. If I'm looking at home, I'm throwing to first base. Uh, okay. So what I would do is every single pitch, I would look at first base when I lifted my leg and then look away every single time. Even when I was throwing over, I would look away and then you get they get in their secondary lead. I'm getting really baseball nerdy right now. No, it's all right. But they would get in their secondary lead, and that's they're dead to rights at that point. Yeah. You've got all your momentum moving towards second base, and now you got to stop on a dime and slide back into first. And then yeah, that was the biggest one. Yeah. Um, you know, there's certain rules with 45 degree. You can't go past a 45 degree angle. But with a two-man crew in baseball, if you step on it, and if you step a little further than 45 and then walk it off, umpire's not going to go over and look where your footprint is so cheating so bending the rules is how we like to put it <laughs> exploiting the scenario well i just think it's cool you play baseball that's a tough sport it is i played I, my senior year in high school and got hit in the mouth and ooh. that was the last time i ever swung at a pitch I yeah i so i was so bad at baseball and machine pitch yeah that my parents were going to take me out they were like, this is just not the sport for him. Yeah. He can't do it. He sucks. He's terrible. I'm sure they said it in a nicer way than that. <laughs> but like, we got to find something that he's good at to put him in. 
Well, I begged and pleaded, don't take me out. I love it. I don't care if I'm bad. I'm having fun. I have friends that play. Like, I'm enjoying the time there. This is a sad story. It is. Uh, but it has a happy ending. Okay, good. I then come, I was probably the worst player in the league. Uh huh. That conservatively, I was probably the worst player in the league. The following year, I started hitting puberty. And that instead helps. of going Bambi Deer, yeah. where I don't know how to walk and chew gum at the same time, yeah. I became like super athletic. Oh, that helps. And I got really tall and I kept the athleticism and I was probably one of the best players in that league. So good that they took me out of that league and put me in a different league so that I could compete at a higher level. Oh, wow. So see, it does have a happy ending. Yeah, yeah. It's a really tragic story to start. It was. It was sad yeah. at first. But but uh, well, you knew how it ended. I played in college or baseball. So you, you knew where the... You know, I'd, you had me so much in the story <laughs> that I forgot the ending, actually. It's like so, watching the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. see it. There's an iceberg. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last one, and then we'll get, we'll, we'll get rolling. Okay. What is a movie that is universally loved that you hate? Titanic? Yeah, no, I just said yeah. that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a long investment. Yeah. So, now, there are parts of it that I like, but God, that comes on a lot. You know, actually, I will say this, and my wife's going to hate me. I don't like Jaws. And she, that's like her favorite really? movie ever. And anytime oh, you're, you're three seconds into that movie, it's like, oh, we got to sit down and watch the rest of this movie. I, it The one scene where they, they're singing the song on the boat, that's good. But outside of that, it's a brutal movie. Um but I guess I'm I'm not a man out. I get that. Yeah. I get I, that. I, well, I'll, I'll one up you on that one. Star Wars. Ooh, I hate Star Wars. Really? All of just every single all one. Of all of them. them. How many have you seen? Maybe most of the first three. Wow. Like the old, like Harrison Ford first three. Yeah. Maybe all like Harrison those. Ford. I mean, they were fine. Yeah. But like, I just didn't go out. I never seen an episode. Never seen a second of the Mandalorian. Yeah. Uh, it's a good one. I know. I have her. I mean. Yeah. I'm, I understand. Like, I'm in the minority. Yeah. You don't have to sell me on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good point. Same with... Tr- um, Good question. I like that one. Yes. All right. What is... A couple more icebreaker things, and we'll get into the meat and, meat and potatoes of the of the interview. What's a conspiracy theory that you enjoy? Do you have one? Gosh. You know, I I don't know. If we're getting a lot of attention on the conspiracy theory, so we kind of have to keep riding this train. Okay. So I, I, I got I to gotta do this, huh? Well, I, I will tell you in, in the real estate world of things right now, there are a lot of conspiracy theories going on uh, about the MLS regionalization talk. All right. I don't know if you're you're up and hip on the, the issue. I'm, I'm waiting till you or Andrea tells me about it. Well, you know, if you haven't heard, there's a regionalization talk where they're trying to combine a bunch of different MLS. Yes. It's basically I am aware of that. Yes, I do know that. And the conspiracy theories about who's really behind this and, and what who's going to profit off of what, and this is all Zillow or CoStar or something. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting. And it, it, there's a lot of drama around it. So I think that, that actually has to be honest with you. <laughs> I guess I do more than work, but I somehow brought it back to work. There we go. Yeah. All right. So I will say for mine is the Disney, you know, maybe frozen. Okay. There is a very interesting conspiracy theory about that. The movie frozen with Anna, Elsa, a of snowman, my daughter, yeah. I have a seven year old daughter, so I know all about it. There used if you used to Google pre whatever year Frozen came out, if you Googled Disney and Frozen, okay, you would get that Walt Disney cryogenically froze his head. Okay. And they didn't want that anymore. So they created a movie called Frozen. Just for the SEO. And, yes. And pumped it. <laughs> just pumped it in there. So that now when you Google Disney Frozen, you'll never find anything about Walt Disney's head. That is a stupid one. I'm not gonna lie. Why do they care so much about this? I don't. I don't know. Same. I think it's kind of cool. Story. Yeah, exactly. So that that is uh, that is by far mine. Do people freeze heads anymore? I feel like that I was no. That was a big thing. Yeah, when we were I growing up, the lab got compromised. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember it was uh, it was like a big thing on The Simpsons where people yeah were freezing heads. That but, that's a podcast episode all in itself. What, yeah, what the Simpsons have predicted. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. So all right. Besides work and family, mm-hmm. obviously you just said you do a lot of work. Yeah. Um, new, newly father, congrats. Thank Officially you. Officially on air, congrats. Thank you. Three month old. And when, I tell you, when you have uh, a baby and you're you're raising her, she started sleeping through the night at yep. uh, tw- nine weeks. Okay. Full 12 hours. And I can't get over telling people that. And um, so I think a, a good stat was how quickly that we were able to get her to sleep. 12. 
you're you're like into things that no one else cares mm-hmm. about, you know. And I used to be the dude who was like, yeah, whatever, who cares. So it's it's fun to be on the other side and realize like, oh man, maybe I maybe I should have acted like I was interested when the new father was telling me. Yeah, it, uh, you're doing a good job acting. Thank you, right? <laughs> thank you. No, I, ha- I, mean, I have a kid. I'm a, I have a one and a half year old son, so yeah. I'm right there in the thick of it with you. So I haven't seen Frozen yet, but that's oh, that's it's coming. coming. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, it's sure. coming. You'll have that. You'll have Moana. Mm-hmm. Um, don't even yeah. know what we're talking about. Moana, yeah. I guess. Moana is, a, Moana is a good one, though. Okay. As a parent, you will enjoy Moana. Okay. It's a good little flip. Not Frozen? I think Frozen's fine. Okay. I've seen it too many times now to be, I'm a little burnt on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> when your daughter wants to watch it, buy all the toys, buy all the dresses. Over and over and over and over. Disney stuff isn't cheap if you didn't know. No, I didn't know. I'll find all that out. That stuff's very expensive. Um so for me, um, hopefully I play a lot of golf this summer and yeah. spring. Uh, I would like to do more of that. Um, but as we learned on the last podcast, uh, video games are actually a big filler of my time when it's obviously not family, mm-hmm. family and work. Um, so that's, that's an interest of mine as well. Did I answer that question? Did I just talk about my daughter? Did I? I think you did actually. Real, I'm official father. It's all right, it's all right man. I, uh, that's, what, that's what being a father is. Yeah, well, to answer that question, we can move on. But no, let's hear it. I want to know now. Um, I'm really into triathlon. So yeah, that's right. You are. That's, that's what takes up most of my that and horses. So if right. there's, I have so many hobbies, but I've had to pare them down to two. And the yeah. two that are left are thoroughbreds and uh, triathlon. Okay. So those are my two things. I too actually own some horses. I own like half a hoof. Really? Yep. On uh, blackout racing is the stable. Okay. Do you mind us wasting some? Let's more go for time? it. Let's nerd out. Horses really nerd out. Yeah. So how long have you been doing that? Um, this is. I think it started beginning of last year. It was yeah. A client of mine bought a house. Um, he actually is a manager at Chick Fil A. Okay. Shameless plug to Chick Fil A again. Yeah. Um, really going for that spot. Yeah, the exactly. Please. <laughs> Anything. Um, they are. They had an opening in one of their partnerships. Yeah. Um, wasn't crazy. Yeah expensive to get in um that's what every ho- horse owner says by the way yeah. yeah we always downplay it yes so got in um and we i think we've got five now uh that's awesome yeah we've got five uh have you been there for one of their victories yet? i have not because the the only victories they had were what's the what's the track in virginia uh I think it's near no i think it's in newport virginia it's like nine hours away i was actually going to go um, but they, I just, I just Laurel. I don't know. I should know that now. Let me see if I can. This is great. That's great. And great show. I'll, I'll fill this in, yeah. but <laughs> it, if they, if you are there for, for a victory, it is the coolest thing. I, yeah. I have this weird thing with horses when, when they win, sometimes I just break down and cry, especially if it's like a Philly. Yeah. Um, and I've been there for maybe six of the wins of some of our horses and every time full tears. It is, I I love the sport so much. It's actually my, my dream to be into the thoroughbred industry one way or I, I I found a lot of joy. I've always loved gambling. I've always loved some sort of, you know, the, the track going to the track is because you can go at 18. So the moment I turned 18, it was, we spent a lot of time there, friends and, and buddies. Um, yeah, so we've got. The, the whole group as a whole, I think, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus a couple of Phillies, like 10 or 11 wow. total. Sorry if I'm missing those numbers, um, Kyle, if you're, <laughs> if you're watching this. It's all right. Um, and then our group has, I believe, three or four. Uh, Miss Rip is probably the most successful one that we've had. I think she's dealing with some injury right now. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, and uh, but she has... She won her first race, which was awesome. On debut? Yes, debut. Wow. Was it a maiden special weight or... I, that I don't remember. Okay, I, it was too long ago, but I got like the picture and everything. I was like, "This is awesome." As a as a winner, uh, you feel like you figured it out. Oh yeah, oh, and maybe I won like as a as a partial owner, I got maybe like two hundred bucks. Yeah, a bit. yeah. <laughs> but it's like your I'm bet like, probably I'm put done today. working today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> probably my feet up. That's my accomplishment for the week. <laughs> yeah, and we're done. Yeah. Yeah, no I, more sales calls. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, from a for a Louisville boy. It's it's always been a passion and being able to like actually own horse. I've always wanted to own a sports team, which is unreasonable. But you can if you own just a piece of a horse. It's like owning your own sports team. Yeah. Like, so it's I have zero say in what they do. Yeah. I'm, no. I'm just on it for the ride. Yeah, and that's that's the cool yeah. part. It seems like they're doing a really good job from the outside looking in. I don't know obviously how the inner workings are. Looks like they're doing a good job from yeah. the outside looking in. Uh, they treat the horses right. Good. 
Um, we just donated one to a farm. Yeah, good. Um, we could have continued when they, we clearly could have continued to race the horse right. and try to squeeze every little ounce of dollar out of it. Um, or put it in a claiming race. So yeah, can't, some, you don't have control. Exactly. Of that. And then they'll uh, run it into the ground. Mm-hmm. But so we donated it to a farm, um, to, you know, live out a nice, easy, stress-free life. Yeah. Um, so I like, I really, I really, really liked that when I saw that because yeah. I'm like, not only are they, they seem like good people on the outside. They actually are good people. They're mm-hmm. doing good things. They do a lot of. They seem like good yeah. people. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know one. They're good people to me. Like, okay. <laughs> this is back early, you know, early 2023. I'm like, they seem like good guys. I'll yeah. get involved. And the more you're there, you're like, these are really good guys. They do a lot for charity. And they do a lot of the barrel for a cause stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that we just acquired a, I didn't do a lot of research because I didn't plan on talking about this. Uh, That's all right. But they, they did a lot of, um, what are those horses that you decorate and they see them around town? I know what you mean. We, we were trying to get there was a charitable aspect to that, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Um, they, Gallapalooza or something like Something that. like that. We've got one of those, and I think they're doing the unveiling soon of what it looks like, but I think they hired like a local artist to do it and all that cool stuff. So a lot of really awesome stuff. But yes, the horse racing doesn't take up a lot of my time. Mm-hmm. Um, well, spring's coming up. We'll have yeah. to go to the Turf Club. Again. Exactly, yes. They're at Turfway. They're, our horses are racing at Turfway Park right now. Yep. And they'll come back to Churchill probably and race um in the spring and the summer so that'll be fun yeah i got i was able to get my my, my owner's license and yeah you never feel cooler at churchill downs and if you have an owner's license have you done the in the paddock well, oh yeah i went everywhere I, that's my favorite part of it all. i took a buddy um last fall and you're it's like you're just walking around the mall I know. you can just go anywhere you want you just fly out he's he's with me and they're like, okay, come on through, sir. Have a nice day. Well, and for me, all those jockeys and trainers, I mean, they might as well be, you know, NBA. I mean, they oh, are, yeah. there are, they are at that level. And some of them, yeah, some of them are making more than. Yeah. The, yeah. The, and like, yeah. you know, someone like Erod er- Arti- and Jose Ortiz, mm-hmm. the Ortiz brothers, they're like right next to me as I'm saddling up a not great horse. And I know they're going to beat me by 20 lengths, but I'm just like, babe, that's the Ortiz brothers. You know, it's, he's really good. The access that you get as, yeah, like you said it. Very small percentage. It's amazing. Yeah, it. I we. I, I'm maybe one percent. Yeah, right, maybe. And they don't maybe care. More. It's like as long as you're on one percent, you get your owner's license. The only person who may have more access to me is like Dwayne Lucas. I know. <laughs> it's it's wild. Like sometimes I'm in there. I'm like, are, am I allowed to be in here? This doesn't feel like I'm supposed to be here. Now you can actually. I've done this too. You can use that thing and go in the paddock even when you don't have uh, a horse in the race. You just oh yeah well, no I have you done yeah, that oh before? yeah yeah the day we went I didn't have anybody racing yeah just, we just wanted to we just wanted to bet yeah, yeah it was a nice day we we needed something to do we we chalked it up as a networking thing it's a baller move too you're like yeah. I'll get you guys in the yeah no problem no big deal we uh they we, know me here it was the first time we, it was a funny story actually the the first day the first time I ever did it, I went with him mm-hmm. and I was told to park in the yellow lot mm-hmm. well the guy that told me where to go could not have given me worse directions. You know, they're not actually very kind to you in the parking lots there. As so I'm driving back where the stables are. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the gate, way off. And the gate is wide open to the track. I could have just hung a right and just <laughs> next thing you know, we're on Churchill Downs. <laughs> we're on the track. And there was nothing stopping me but air and opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually walked on the track on Derby Week last okay. year. Okay. We had a horse run in on Tuesday. Came in third. Um, and that was like a childhood dream being able to walk in the yeah. actual downs on derby week you know that would be that would be awesome all right let's get into some real estate stuff do we have to fair enough kind of everyone we has skipped to time, to, point, time to pay the bills yeah <laughs> everyone has hit fast forward at this point all right what is your largest real estate deal residential or commercial i dealer's choice um i sold a three million dollar commercial lot on broadway once okay uh, that was probably the highest dollar number uh, residential. I interviewed for like a five point something million dollar one and was told I got the listing. Ooh. And then um, and then someone came in and, oh, well, one of the past buyers put in an offer mm-hmm. that that contract fell through. And a year later, I saw it back on the market with someone else. And, you know, the three million dollar lot that you sold downtown. Do you know what they built there? Do you remember? Uh, Indies Chicken. You know. It was uh, not the answer I was expecting. Yeah, it was a chicken gas station. So it was a gas station with the Indies chicken next to it. Double dipping. Mm-hmm. What was your sm- mine? I- I've said it before. Mine was five twenty, I believe. Five hundred twenty thousand. Oh, it was a residential deal. Oh, okay. Um, what are your smallest residential deal? Rent rentals don't count. Do lots count? 
Eh, mine's a lot. So if you want to go that route, we can go. We can go. I'll, I'll give you the land. I, I sold a fifteen hundred dollar lot. Okay. Um, in Old Makers in uh, in a floodplain. Oh. Seller did seller financing. And uh, had to foreclose on the guy after three months. Oh, yeah, it was a brutal one. I went to high school with that guy with the seller. Yeah. Um, and the um, the uh, I'm sorry, our producer here is looking at the cameras. Are just to check, we are going right. Okay, because you don't want to miss this next ten thousand dollar home story. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For all Rogan fans out there, there's like four people that yeah. laugh. Um, we. Uh, I sold a, a $10,000 listing that we negotiated down to $7,000, and that was the lowest one. That had a, actually a house, house, house? Yeah, yeah. House, house. Well, yeah. it would look it like a house. on a roof. Yeah, and well, it, it, yeah. in theory, it had four walls and a roof. It looked like a house, and it was uh, a minimum. I, I actually got a $1,000 commission for that. It was nice. Minimum. My commission was almost bigger than the house. So that, I would assume that was a, a flat fee commission, not a... Yeah, it was a HUD, HUD home deal, flash... Flat fee commission, um, and that was back in 2012, where like foreclosures were starting to be the thing for investors. Mm-hmm. What's the furthest you have driven for a showing? I real listing appointment, yeah, whatever you want, whichever. Yeah, part. and I'm ch- I'm gonna botch the name of this town, but it was right across the river. It was a really cool town that was like basically on the river. Uh, I had to go into Indiana for most of the time, and then cut back across to Kentucky. I don't think it's Gent, Kentucky. I don't know. Um, but it was about a two and a half hour drive, I think. Um, so five hours round trip. Yeah, you got me beat by a landslide. Didn't sell the house though. Oh. Yeah. I saw I sold a lot to a couple in um uh, Clarkson, mm. Kentucky. Mm. Oh, there's a Clarkson, Kentucky I didn't know. Yeah, I think it's Clarkson, Kentucky. We'll go with that. Yeah, it's Clarkson, Kentucky. Hundred yeah. percent. No for sure. Don't no doubt don't don't, don't fact check. Don't look that up. Um but yeah, that was that was interesting because it had it had dwellings on it that really I would consider like a hunting blind. Would mm. consider it like a livable. I, I picked that up when you said dwelling. Yeah, that was that was definitely the proper word yeah. to use. <laughs> yeah, um, but they they acquired a mobile home. So they were they were going to okay. pick up to the utilities on that, and and they uh, I helped them sell their house off the trail. Yeah, they bought the land. Bought the land. Sounds fun. Um, they bought the land without me though. They had already secured the land but they wanted me to go out there and look at it with them and you just did out of the kindness of your heart yeah i mean i helped i was helping them sell their house so it wasn't like you know it wasn't pro bono. not all realtors are just and then for the commission look at this guy yeah so but uh but yeah that was that was fun i had to drive it was basically like drive till you got till you felt like you were lost mm. and then drive a little bit. Mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> right when your cell goes out of service you yeah. just figure it out you're just hoping and praying that like the satellite the gps satellite is still yeah Somewhere, somewhere that yeah, there that don't go under the might not be able to call anyone, but I can at least get back to civilization. <laughs> um, but it was deep, and that's exactly what they wanted. I mean, this was well, it's a hunting ground. Is what it sounds like. yeah, it was. I think it was maybe five or seven acres, and it was like friend of a friend of a friend, and they just needed to get rid of it, so they offloaded it for something that like they it was so easy they didn't even get me involved. Yeah, they were just like there, there's no point. We're not going to pay a commission on this. The seller doesn't want to pay a commission on this. We're just going to buy it essentially sight unseen. And they just wanted you to bless their deal? Yeah, well, they wanted me to go look at it for something with the utilities. They 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 had a guy coming out to look at something, and they're like, can you come out too just so we have somebody in our corner? And I'm like, you know, I don't think the utilities guy's out to get you. But yeah, no, <laughs> sure. I, you know, I don't have a lot to do today. Gladly, Obviously, you had nothing to do. Yeah, I'll gladly drive out there. I'm kind of curious what it looks like anyway, yeah. take some photos and, you know. Full service realtor. Good yeah. for you. From from, from uh, contract to close. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. So we just had our 10-year anniversary as homepage. We did. Happy anniversary. Congrats on 10 years of success. We Well, success te- is staying in business. No, no, no. Oh. I'll, I'll take the success part. It's the 10-year. Technically, we turned 10 in uh, like September or something like that. But- oh, okay. But we're, yeah. we're going to say it's our 10th year of business. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because we're going to stretch out that ten year next year too. Just oh yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna celebrate this thing great for years. Yeah, <laughs> I had we we did an award ceremony. Uh, we did. It was very fun. Oh, it was awesome. It was a I blast. Have, yeah. Um, you were missing some awards though. Oh no, and I have them for you. I have gotten a lot of complaints in the past that I either forget a thank you or oh no, this is this isn't anything like this. I have I have new awards that you should consider giving out. Oh okay, yeah. Right, no, you did fantastic. 
Uh, I'm I glad Carrie was able to be there, but yeah. thank you for everything that you did in this. Yeah, I was just fishing for that compliment. Yes. So thank you. Um, no, you awards were great. They were Good. fantastic. Good. I have more, though. Good. Um, I have the open house king and queen. You know, we probably should because, I mean, realtors got to work, man. And those open out, I think they're tough. Yeah, but also, like, I get so many people coming into my office, especially last year. I mean, it was mm-hmm. fun for everyone. And it's like, what am I going to do? I, I've thought about, you know, using AI to hook up with this other, you know, lead generation system. I'll put it up with follow up boss. And I'm like, what is your spend? Like, oh, it's $3,500 a month. You know, it's a good deal. And it's like, just work an open house, man. Even if you don't pick something up, I think new, um, this is my open house uh, soapbox. Yeah. But, um, new realtors, if you haven't worked 10 open houses, you're just not doing it right. I mean, I think some people get discouraged after, after no business. Mm-hmm. But when you're brand new, just talking about real estate is priceless for you. Yeah. You know, because you have no idea how to sell a house or how to educate a client on on what real estate is, what's important to people. You're just picking up on what people actually notice compared to what you notice. And and to not to cheapen your your own education by saying, I'm I'm not going to do open houses, I think is a big disservice to you. So if you are a new agent out there, work open houses. So yeah, I think we should have an award for that. Yep. The GPS warrior. Most miles traveled as a realtor. No, that's There's a good a little one. bit of an honor system here. Yeah, I was gonna say it. tough but tough to enforce. Not, if but. you're not Tracking your miles though as a realtor, you're doing yourself a disservice. I feel like this is just another award for Ryan Cecil to win. You know, she sold six. She has a lot of homes in the West End, which is where she lives. I mean, she lives in in this in the South End. She does a lot of work out there. I don't think she yeah. she's gonna have a lot of like one point twos and like one point yeah miles. a lot of them because it's like yeah. sixty eight homes a lot to sell yeah in one year. See, but. someone I think shout out to my Bullock County neighbor i think tara barnes would be a would be a winner of that because we're out in bullet county and she, she sells, does a lot in bullet she also sells in indiana a ton of indiana too so that's good that's a good call i think i think she probably would win that. so she would be just out of and she has won most organized before so she would be one that actually would record her miles i have an, app, the on, I have an app on my phone shout out mile iq no well done that's a free app well no it's a free app to download 5.99 to track your miles worth every penny new sponsor as well not yet. We'll see. Not yet. We'll see. To be determined. <laughs> um, all right. I've got funniest public remarks. Oh, man. So funniest <laughs> funniest public remarks was actually uh, my fault in, in this one. And I'm not going to name the agent. That's okay. to me. But You were going to give this out, though? Um, in, the, in the early days, as yeah. an entrepreneur, you do everything in the business, right? Yep. And this was maybe our third or fourth year in, um, which actually isn't that early. I probably mm-hmm. should have had someone doing this at this point, but I think we had a couple admins on, on vacation. So I was putting in listings that day. Yeah. Um, and when we first started, I put in everyone's listing. And uh, one of our agents sent me the public remarks and at and I just copy pasted it, just threw it right back up there. Yeah. And like, Five minutes later, I get a call from a broker friend of mine. He's like, hey, man, y'all just listed this property on 123 Main Street. I think you need to look at the remarks real quick and check it down. (laughs) So I'm like terrified, feverishly finding the thing. I look at the remarks. And at the end, the agent just said, I don't know, man. I don't know what else to say. Just make some shit up. (laughs) Then I would just put that all over the MLS. So I think that takes the cake. I I probably screwed that up. All right. um, Let's see what else I got on here. Um, the time traveler agent. Okay. This goes to the agent that refuses to learn new techniques or technology. There, there's a couple, I think my father-in-law, uh, might actually be the one who wins that every year. Um, Steve Hall. I yep. don't know if you've been able to know oh, yeah. him yet, but yeah, I, I've done many of things for him on his iPhone settings. So I think I know exactly what you're talking about. And then last, but certainly not least the survivor of the year, which is the agent that survived the most bizarre or challenging deal. I mean, honestly, that should be Andrea Murphy every year because she's got to survive all your all's bizarre and challenging deals as a managing broker. Yeah. I like all of those, though. Yeah. We're so, going to steal some of those. I didn't. I noticed, though, you weren't writing them down. Well, I just figured you'd text it to me, right? Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. definitely going to watch the show as soon as it's <laughs> up, so I'll take notes then. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> um, all right, moving on. So tell me about how you founded Homepage. Um, that is obviously... Um, uh, storied history yeah. of how you founded it. What made you want to become a broker? How did Carrie fit into the whole thing? Um, just kind of sure. take us through the origin story on that. 
All right. Um, you weren't with us two years ago, were you? I came in. Like this was your your second awards show. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Last year was my first full year of real estate. I came in halfway. I came in, I believe, December of twenty two. Okay. I think. Yeah. So you missed the um, the one at headliners that we did. Correct. I was not there. It was a fun one. Um, but so I told the story. Uh, okay. Then, um, and with the the official tenth awards ceremony that we'll be throwing this year, I think I'm going to do it as well. Um, because obviously some new stuff is happening. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. Um, but it's a long story. I mean, I'll, I'll try to give you the shortest possible version of it. Um, I of Riddlers. Uh, yeah, I originally, um, well, just from life, I've always been like a, an entrepreneur. I always had to kind of create my own job. Uh, failed out of college, not failed out. I kind of just quit. Um, so I'd always like had to like brazen my own path, I guess. Um, and I had started Chop Shop Salads, I mm-hmm. sold that, and spent about three years with like nothing really of direction. Doing starting small businesses. I was a professional poker player at one point during that time. Nice. Um, I had a podcast on yeah. fantasy football called the Fantasy Fumble, and I met my my wife Stephanie, my now wife Stephanie, and her father um, Steve Hall, my father in law. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how I first got it into real estate. But I always knew going into there that I wanted to start a company within mm-hmm. real estate. So um, I I had done through podcasts and stuff, a lot of, you know, work on social media. That's how we advertised on Chop Shop Salads a lot, um, a lot of multimedia type stuff. And I found that locally, it didn't seem at least that many brokerages were kind of utilizing what I thought to be mm-hmm. the the new wave of advertisement and, and a great tool that's actually pretty cheap, you know, compared to like other forms of advertisement. So I, um, I decided to start a homepage based around the idea of, you know, media in general, homepage reels, you like the homepage of your website. Mm-hmm. And, um, I left the brokerage I was with, uh, about a year and a half in. So I, was not able to actually have my broker's license mm-hmm. yet, but I partnered with someone who had their broker's license to start homepage realty. That was about three months or so that, that we um, kind of worked together. He decided to go to um, uh, back to Indiana. He wanted to run uh, for political office. So um, during that time, uh, right before that happened, he had actually recruited Carrie. Okay. Um, as an agent, and we gave her anything she wanted as mm-hmm. far as split split win. I mean, she was 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 she as successful then as she is now, or at least was she to still, me was she still a heavy hitter then? To me, she was a heavy hitter. She was selling like six to eight million dollars, which was about the level that I was selling. And and no one wanted, no one knew who we were, so it wasn't like we had a bunch of what I considered at the time topper. I mean, now she just sold eighteen million dollars yeah. in just Louisville. So, but she was you know doing a lot and. We were able to bring her on as an agent, and um, and at the time uh, when when my business partner decided to go back to politics, I I'd, I'd been kind of watching how diligently she works. I mean, that's one thing that's probably the least um, understood about Carrie is literally how much. I mean, it's mm-hmm. I don't know eighteen out of the twenty four. I say this as a compliment. She makes it look easy, it, and that's why I, I think. I, think I know people, it's not. Yeah. And people will like go to meet with Carrie and say like, how, how do I sell $18 million? And there's a lot of things she does, but most of it is her work ethic. Mm-hmm. And, and any agent that wants to make a lot of money in real estate, it's actually very possible. You just have to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so I noticed that in there and I, I, I knew I needed, I'm the type of person who, who likes to work with teams. I don't want to be the sole owner. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I'm lazy. I don't know, but I, uh, I asked, if we wouldn't classify you as lazy, but <laughs> go on. <laughs> I asked, um, I asked Carrie to be my business partner at that time. Mm-hmm. And, um, she said, yes, thankfully, obviously, you know, the end of the story. Yep. Um, and we needed a broker. And, and during that time, uh, we had one agent who had their broker's license, uh, a guy named W Andrew Scott. And about a month in, um, to him being our broker, he passed away. Mm. Tragic. And I called KREC and, um, and asked, you know, our broker just passed away. What, what can we do? They said, Oh, it's okay. You have six months 
Um, and I was like, oh, wow, that's incredibly lenient. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, so you're closing the business. You have six months to close the business. I was like, oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> we are trying to continue. I am massively in debt. <laughs> I still need to make some money here. Uh, it's been a lot of money on startup costs. And she, she said, well, you know, we'll give you to the end of the week. Just don't tell anybody. End of the week? It's like Wednesday. <laughs> um, and to, you know, I think it was one of those moments, like almost in a movie, where you feel like you have no option and all of a sudden the world just like lifts you up. And I had multiple, I mean, three different brokers Stephanie Gillisan. Um, I know who she is. Gil Holland. Or Gil Holland. <laughs> no, sorry. Gant Hill. I know a Gil Holland. Yeah. <laughs> Gil, Gil does not have his broker. I love you, Gil, but you don't have your broker's license. Um, Gan Hill reached out and and they said, let me let me do it for you for free while you go get your brokers. Like I heard about, you know, um, Andrew, I'm so sorry. And and let me kind of release this burden on you. So I took Gant up on it and it took a year um, under his broker's license for me to actually get my own. And that wasn't because I was not doing the stuff. It was I was running a company, having to sell real estate getting married at the time and oh by the way trying to get your broker's license on the side yeah um and you know to this day i owe so much to to gant you know we we could have been nothing a- after that moment and he took us in he taught me he we actually worked out of um one of his buildings that he managed called the Taurus building mm-hmm. and um finally got my broker's license and and kind of the rest rest kind of happened from there but for a while it was incredibly touch and go um and i think anyone who started a successful business would say this that like if they would have known then what you know now i would have quit um but the fact that i was ignorant and the fact that i had like no freaking other option i felt like i probably did but in my life out at that point i'm like i I didn't graduate college i got you know, this, this new fiance that I'm trying to marry her, her dad's definitely probably judging me on can yeah. support my daughter. He was, he was licensed at the time too. Oh yeah. He's <laughs> his member number is three Oh five. That's awesome. So like the 305th realtor in Glar, uh, <laughs> mine is two, two, nine, five, two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, and it just gutted, gutted it out and we got lucky, you know, had a lot of debt on credit cards, trying to make payments, you know, payment plans with Amex. Um, but yeah, I mean, every step of the way was luck and, you know, we're, we're here today in our second office, which is yeah. wild to say. That's a, that's a great transition because I was just about to talk about that. Okay. Uh, no, no plan on that. So this being our second office, yep. um, have you ever considered a third office? How did I know you were going there? Where, where's the third off? Yes. Oh, I have, no, this is, this is, a, no, there's, I don't have something in mind. This is a hypothetical yeah. e- expansion knowing you for the, the two years that I have, like you don't slow down. <laughs> <laughs> so I think sometimes I should, uh, um, that's not what I said. I said yeah, I, I know. I definitely, so it, you know, is there, is there grow is it, to piggyback off of that? Where do you see homepage in 10 years as well? You know, is there expansion is, are you content with what you have? I'll never be content with yeah. what I have. I think that's something in me that I'm always like wanting more of my own hardest critics. So um, as far as Louisville goes, though, you know, I think one of the purposes of this building here in Delore, which, you know, Carrie, business partner, did an amazing job. It's beautiful. Life. It's gorgeous, right? We we were wanting to have private office space. You know, mm-hmm. as we're sitting here, one of our agents, Mike Munn, comes in yep. and he lives in the area. He's got a private office space. So. At our main campus, obviously, we don't have private office space. It's more like shared office space. Mm -hmm. So if we felt that we had enough demand for another kind of satellite office for for people who wanted to rent out the space, yeah, I mean, it'd be great to have that convenience for everyone. But I think sometimes it takes away from not this building, but I wouldn't want to get too spread out to where we didn't have like that feeling at sales meeting where we have like 50 people there. Yeah. There's a, there's a culture at the LaGrange office. Exactly. Exactly. And this is beautiful and it's a great place to work. And I think two things are needed like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But I wouldn't want to spread so thin that we feel like this bifurcated sleeper cell network of realtors, you know? (laughs) Um, So, so the next expansion though, I would love to get into a new market. Mm -hmm. Um, My dream. When you say new market, do you mean out a different County or do you mean like Florida? All, all the above. Okay. Yeah. My dream is to have 
a group of agents, one agent, however many agents come to me and say, I want to start homepage, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would empower them and, and train them and do whatever I could to, to teach them to be able to, to be in my position and and get to see like the empowerment that you give people, Mm -hmm. uh, in real estate. So, um, we almost went into a, a market and we had the space identified. We were looking over the lease We had employees ready to hire, and then we started getting the sense that the Fed was not going to cooperate with us, Mm. and interest rates kept ticking up. And luckily, smartly, uh, we decided that let's put that on pause. Let's let 2024 play or 2023 play itself out. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm glad we did because I, I at the time it was like fall ish, like into summer of 22. And I, I thought it could be, I thought we were almost overreacting, but instantly it was like, oh no, this is going to be a heck of a year. So I'm yeah. glad we didn't like double expand at that time. But to answer your question, I don't know if it was just a word salad and answer to your question. No, it was a hundred percent an answer to the question. Um, so I, um, we've got a few other things we want to talk about, but we are running out of time, unfortunately. Dude, I screwed We're going up with the horse talk. No, it's fine. It's fine. What we need to do is now just have a part two. See, that that was my strategy. That was see, you're playing the long game. Exactly. You're playing the long game. Um, so they're playing us off. Um and music the music's playing us off. Um I, I first of all I just want to thank you for your time. Yeah. That was um you did not have to do it. I know you wanted to do it, but you did not have to do it. So I truly appreciate your time huh. coming out, doing this, um, any research that you put into it. I appreciate that as well. Appreciate everything you do at homepage. Appreciate everything that Carrie does at homepage, obviously as well. Um, I, Thanks, my career would not be where it is if it wasn't for the two of you. Oh, and a lot of other people involved. But you know, the, the you guys are the ones that create the culture and hire all the people. Um, it starts at the top. I, I truly believe that. So thank you for that. That's cool, man. Um, with that being said, I am starting a new. Uh, I stole this from another podcast. Um, I am starting a new tradition of giving a gift to every person that's on the podcast. Oh, wow. Don't get too excited. Oh, okay. Because I am not spending money. Okay. (laughs) All right. This is a gift that came from my house. Okay. That I no longer use or didn't even, in your case, forgot that I even... Oh, I like it. I like it. All right. So, you are a Barry Sanders fan. Yeah, a huge Barry Sanders fan. Yes. I, too, actually am a Lions fan. I don't know if you're a Lions fan or a Barry Sanders fan. I've begrudgingly... Kept paying attention, but more of a Barry okay. Sanders. It's, okay. it's hard to hold that strong. Yep, that's tough. This year was fun. but Yes, this year was great. I'm a diehard Lions fan. I took two weeks off of sports in general after the NFC Championship game because I was not mentally ready to listen to what people had to talk about. <laughs> I then turned back on for the Super Bowl. Yeah. And the wounds were reopened. Oh, really? It was rough. Well, you felt like we could have won that? I mean, we did have the game won. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, yeah. I definitely think that... Like, yeah. That should have been us. Definitely. Yes. Or at the bare minimum, at least lose the Super Bowl. Yeah. We we 100% had the game won against 49ers. Yeah. And I don't know what happened. Just stop running the ball. Yeah. But nonetheless, I have a gift. I got this actually in the Cayman Islands. Oh, dude. Look at this. It's a little skull with the lions on it. Is the camera getting this right here? Look at that. Hope so. That is awesome, man. So... That, I will use this. Hopefully that will leave the drawer of my... Bed night, bed, bedside it, table. It will go right on the desk. And we'll end somewhere that actually people get to see. It will go right on the big desk. The big desk of the big toe. Yeah, It'll there we go. There. The big desk of the big toe. It'll be right there. Well, hey, man, I know you got to go, but yep. thank you so much for having me on. Well, thank you. Uh, this is awesome. You're such a good realtor, Thai producer you. this year. Thank you. Real cool guy, by the way, too. Well, thanks. Just in case you wanted to know that as well. But um, I think that this is something that's going to last, hopefully. I hope so, too. Um, It's really entertaining. You have a great show. Thank you. Appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Awesome.